And as you can see, the topics are still in discussion. Um, so there are different ways how the IGF youth track um, is incorporated, let's say, in, in the MAG. So first via the, the newly um, selected working group and also in general to have youth experts engaged into the annual IGF to have them, for example, as active speakers. So again, meaningful uh, participation as active speakers, resource persons, moderators, uh, reporters, and more. Um, Anya can, is the focal per, uh, person for the um, youth, uh, youth track within the IGF Secretariat, so never hesitate to contact her um, uh, when you have any questions. Um, further to that, again, the, the four workshops uh, and the themes still need to be defined, so the consultations are currently ongoing. Um, Anya will closely uh, work together, of course, with uh, the, the MAG Working Group on Youth. And um, one, um, uh, one outcome also from, from last year's IGF is that the youth coordinators asked uh, to have a little bit more time for the Global uh, Youth Summit, which normally takes place on um, uh, day zero. So here again, a, a short overview and breakdown of um, the, the numbers um, from the call for, for uh, thematic um, input. Um, first was AI, second was cybersecurity, and you can also see the list of issues. So um, stay connected. Um, we also encourage um, experts uh, that are outside of the, the youth category to, to take part. And um, again, as I mentioned, don't hesitate to reach out to Anya. And also perhaps in case um, Abdul Rahman wants to say something else in addition, but the host country is very keen on um, further working on the, the youth track and of course also including uh, youth, especially from, from the region. So that would be it from um, the youth track. Let me shortly introduce now the work of the NRIs. By the way, I see these presentations for the first time, so bear with me. <laughs> Ah, Anya, do you want to take over? I can uh, show the presentations instead of you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Celine. Uh, it doesn't sound like you're seeing them for the very first time. I can, yes, I can maybe uh, speak a little bit about the NRIs, take any of the questions that you may have on the youth track. Um, I apologize. Uh, I'm here with uh, with our colleague, Wemin from UNDESA on a bilateral meeting. I did present the capacity development track also here in this meeting, and um, you know it's interesting. So the meeting went over time, but thank you so much. So uh, allow me please to uh, share the slide. Okay, I hope that uh, it's coming through now. Yes, um, so very briefly about the NRIs, I won't take a lot of time, but I hope that you will have questions after. Um, the NRIs group is, is growing, certainly, and uh, now we've reached the number of 168 officially recognized NRIs. As you know, we reported uh, back to the community at the end of last year on a number 165, so we had uh, three more IGF initiatives joining the network. Uh, and those three are basically the ones that you see at the bottom of this slide, the Swiss Youth IGF, the Czech Republic or Czechia IGF, and uh, a sub-regional IGF called the Mano River uh, Internet Governance Forum. Um, and this is the breakdown of the NRIs. Currently, uh, 104 countries are having their national IGFs. You can see the breakdowns per, uh, per regions uh, on this slide. We also have 24 regional and sub-regional IGFs and 40 youth IGFs. And then uh, just on the NRI's work, the NRI's as a network started working obviously uh, shortly after the IGF in Kyoto concluded on planning what could be done and achieved in 2024. And the result of the bottom-up consultations is the agreed NRI's work plan, which uh, you can see hopefully on the screen now. It's available also at the IGF website. But in short, I'll just say that the focus of this year's work of the NRIs is indeed to work better, uh, more efficient with the MAG. And I wish to recognize immediately the role of the MAG chair, who has taken this very seriously and has been joining the NRIs meeting uh, almost after uh, her appointment. So the network is really, really appreciates that. Uh, of course, the focus is also contributions to the Vistas Plus 20 process, but also to the global 
uh, to the GDC, um, then to better work with the intersectional work. Um, so as soon as it's approved, and I assume that it's approved as I missed uh, an hour or two of the meeting, uh, we will then work with the MEG co-facilitators to understand what could be the quickest way uh, and the most efficient way for the NRIs to contribute to the intersessional work. Um, in terms of the NRI session, uh, I'm glad that I can, as an NRI's focal point, report to the NRI's uh, after this meeting concludes that the main session and the collaborative three, three collaborative sessions can continue. And I know that the network, uh, through this work plan, said they are committed to um, prepare them even better. The MAG is always invited to work with the NRIs, and uh, there's always a um, need to just prepare better proposals, tackle uh, the issues that are of interest to the communities across the world, uh, avoid repetitions, um, including repetitions of speakers, and hopefully use the NRI session to engage uh, the weak and missing voices, as the Secretary General has put it in, in the IGF in Paris. Um, in addition to that, uh, enhanced communication is a goal of uh, this year for the NRI, so we do work with our communications expert in the office, uh, but also, of course, with the MAG as well to understand uh, how to bring visibility to the NRIs, but also benefit better from their work and, uh, and inform better the community about the, the value of the NRIs. Financial sustainability, that's also a subject um, of discussion for the NRIs to hopefully um, think about ways to become more financially stable, if not sustainable, given that that's an ongoing challenge. But we have to recognize also the change in the global ecosystem because uh, we are seeing uh, new organizations opening the grants program specifically for the NRIs, and that's, um, that's a very good progress um, in this area. And with that, to, to the final uh, objective would be to strengthen the stakeholder participation overall. Um, there has been an idea to that the NRIs could help us to make different mm -hmm. stakeholder profiles to be further engaged in the IGF processes. Uh, with that, maybe I'll, I'll stop here. Happy to respond to any of the questions and thank you very much. Um, I we probably don't have the time, but the NRIs did come up with a a few ideas of how to um to strengthen the interactions. Um, I think Amrita was supposed to pop in with a a few of those. I don't know if is she on. I don't know if she's on, but uh, maybe at some point we can see that in writing, Ancha. Yes, absolutely. I think that's a very, uh, very good idea to start from a written draft. Questions, um, Anja? So you could move on to. So, yes, uh, if there are no questions, Carol, I hope I can just have maybe two, three minutes to say uh, a couple of words about the capacity development strategy for this year and also next year. So I will Go ahead, just, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. It just, I, I do understand that we're running out of time, so I won't take a lot of time on this one. So I will present an overview of the capacity development strategy that the Secretariat has put together. Uh, we are aiming for a two-year um, capacity development strategy in light of the very important year that we are in given the business plus 20 uh, consultation process and the renewal uh, next year. So there are a couple of areas that we would like to focus on. Uh, the first one relates to running capacity development workshops for developing country communities. Uh, we count certainly on the NRI's communities as our great partners on this, but we are aware that there are still, there is a, still a significant portion of countries that do not have their national or youth focused IGFs. And we would like also to specifically focus together with the NRI's network uh, on them as well to, to get them on board. Uh, we will continue supporting the NRI's substantively and financially to strengthen their processes, as well as the schools on internet governance uh, in terms of sub substantive support as we have been doing so far, such as, for example, uh, participating in um, a number of these schools. Uh, in terms of the stakeholders integration in the IGFs, uh, we have a very nuanced um, holistic approach where we are specifically tailoring activities 
to support engagement of various uh, stakeholders, including uh, a very valuable group, which are the IGF session organizers. So we will continue providing training and advancing our, our module in order to, to deliver efficient training for them. Working with newcomers, first-time participants at the IGF to help them to navigate the robust program of the IGF. Uh, I, I'm sure Celine mentioned, but we will continue working also on advancing the parliamentary track and uh, facilitating cooperation with parliaments around the world. Uh, Celine spoke about the youth track. Uh, we are indeed keen to continue with the youth track uh, and to expand as much as we can the, um, the reach of the network, first of all, but not just uh, with young people, but also to foster cooperation between young people and what we call the current generation of experts and leaders. Uh, what's maybe new for this year, and uh, it's an outcome, of the IGF in Kyoto is the judiciary track. Uh, there have been calls that the IGF invests efforts in uh, developing capacity of um, judges and uh, those involved in uh, those types of legal proceedings. And uh, we plan to work on that. With, we are starting from a small core group, including the, um, the judge from the Supreme Court of Tanzania that spoke at the uh, at the high level sessions opening at the IGF in Kyoto. And then finally, uh, colleagues were mentioning also before, we will be developing a business track. Uh, uh, there's been a co cooperation there with uh, colleagues from ICC basis as well to understand how to better uh, interconnect with uh, stakeholders coming from the private sector. Um, that includes, of course, uh, the big tech companies, but also uh, the small ones, those that maybe are not even aware of the IGF, uh, but are critically important for the global ecosystem. Then our focus uh, for the next two years is also to cooperate better with the UN agencies and international organizations um, and to have the UN system to maybe use, let's say, better the IGF as a platform for a dialogue and cooperation. We'll be working on supporting the IGF participants but also the MAG, um, the leadership panel, uh, the remote hubs, for example, through financial support uh, to participate in person at the annual IGF meeting. And finally, uh, to those interested to learn more about the IGF uh, or, or globally about internet governance within the UN system, we would welcome to join our fellowship and internship program. Now, this very brief overview that I gave um, comes obviously with a cost. We do have a budget that supports this um, capacity development two-year strategy. That budget is close to um, 1 million US dollars. I won't say that currently we cannot absolutely implement anything, but uh, um, I will say that we are financially challenged and we are waiting for some clarity to understand from our donors, our supporters, cooperation with our host country this year, uh, how this um, capacity development strategy could be developed uh, given that it uh, requires funds. So with that, I'll stop here. Thank you very much, Carol. Thank you, Anja. Any comments, please? The floor is open. Uh, whilst we wait for hands, would it make any sense to prioritize or even prioritize with in each section um, for budgetary reasons? Question withdrawn. <laughs> um, it was brought to my attention that I skipped something. Where did it go? Um, timetable and process for calling for proposals. You have a nice little chart, no? I mean, we would have the, the IGF 2024 timeline that um, shows exactly the dates that were mentioned just before by Peace. Oh. I can quickly show it on the screen and share it in the chats. Okay. All right. So we're done for the day. <laughs> I mean, with, with sessions. Um, so we just on the last thing for wrap up and close. Wout? Uh -huh. Dynamic coalitions, I think, that were discussed in this topic. 
Sorry, I thought it was something that Andrew was supposed to cover, but go ahead. Well, in the interest of time, I will be short. I've already mentioned the strong commitment the Dynamic Coalition have towards strengthening the uh, IGF on the whole and also the outcome orientation of the IGF. The Dynamic Coalition is also meeting regular calls at least once a month, and they have also a work program. Uh, Celine will present it sh very, very shortly, very brief. I would just like to point out also that the IGF, uh, the Dynamic Coalitions would like to maintain their main session. They will have a proposal to make it more action-oriented this time, where only the Dynamic Coalitions would take part who have actually something to produce. And we would like, like last year, have an intersessional meeting where we could actually prepare that, where the would be chosen the dynamic coalitions that have something to present. And having said that, there's another meta item which I flagged at a meeting with the leadership panel. Uh, I think Vince took note and said that was an action item. It's not as simple as that, as we never had the next step of the dynamic coalition where the output is actually approved. You have not an approval process ready and that would need some time to develop. So that is not something that will be done from today to tomorrow, but I would like to flag that to the attention of the MAC. There's something to be parked somewhere and that should be addressed at one point if and when we would like to move and take that extra step where the dynamic coalitions, as I also said, they are very proud and independent. They're fiercely strong on their independent bottom-up grassroots character. But at the same time, they would like to be stronger linked to the IGF proper. And there is a missing link somewhere where there should be a process in place where they actually can have their outcomes approved by the IGF. We have one, for instance, outcome very early on, which are the accessibility guidelines but they have never been translated into official IGF accessibility guidelines. So this is something to be considered. And over to Celine, she will briefly present the work plan we have in place, but thank you for that opportunity. Thank you very much, Marcus. Sorry. Um, so I know that we're short in time. I'm not gonna go over the whole document, but just for you to know that, um, the dynamic coalitions have worked on a um, work plan for 2024. The main objective was indeed to uh, align, first of all, with the activities of the MAG and of the IGF itself. So here you can see the various strategic objectives that we put in place for IGF related activities. Um, so one of them, which was mentioned several times, is indeed to share the expertise and also create synergies among the uh, IGF intersessional work community. Um, one positive outcome, for example, is uh, Vout's proposal that got integrated into uh, the Best Pre Practice Forum on Cybersecurity proposal. Um, but of course, there are many more uh, ways on how DCs can really um, work together and create synergies with um, other um, activities going on within the IGF. Um, the second one, to contribute furthermore to the development of and substantive input to the IGF 2024 program. So this is, um, that that was one of the calls made after the IGF 2023 that DCs would very much like to contribute more um, to, to uh, building the IGF program already in advance. Here again, we've always put some suggested uh, action items. Um, also develop a proposal for DC's integration in the IGF 2024 program. So this is something that um, uh, Marcus presented already yesterday and again uh, touched upon uh, just right now. So DC's have very much uh, been in favor of collaborating more with the MAG to really find an efficient way on how to best integrate with the IGF 2024 program, taking into account that uh, the number of DC's is, um, is growing. And just for you to know, the, the Secretariat is happy to share proposals with the MAG so that they can have a, um, a look at it. Um, and uh, one other thing is to uh, increase the 
visibility and the reputation of the DCs. So um, that is very much uh, regarding the IGF related activities and now coming also to the internet governance related processes. So not only did they want to align with the MAG, they also wanted to align better with um, general processes going on, such as, for example, the uh, Global Digital Compact. And there were some DCs who were present um, in the informal context not only the first, but also the second one that is taking place today, tomorrow. Um, so there is a lot of activity going on there. Um, also, Net Mondial Plus 10. Uh, there is a, a very uh, high interest of also collaborating to the extent possible with um, the Net Mondial Plus 10 um, event taking place. And of course, last but not least, they have been already very active in the past and want to do so also in future regarding the WSIS Plus 20 review process. So I'm going to leave it there, but just for you to know, there is also just, um, you can't see it here, it's a Google document. Um, there is a very a crisp uh, timeline that we're also very happy to share with the MAG for their advanced information. And perhaps also something that um, uh, we would like to, to mention also, so we had a MAG liaison to the dynamic coalitions in the past that was uh, Adam Peak. He is not a MAG member anymore. And uh, if there is any MAG member who would be interested in uh, attending on a regular basis, um, DC calls for the person to be informed and to report back to the MAG, that would be very welcome from, from our side. Thank you so much. Bruna, and then Walt. Thanks, Carol. We just wanted to say goodbye from the Berlin Hub. Okta and I have been doing the meeting together, so... Thanks everyone for the meeting and congratulations, Carol, for your first open consultations, the in-person one. So thanks a lot. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. And thanks definitely for your contributions. Thank you. Wout? Yes, uh, thank you, Carol. I think what Mark has proposed and Celine already proposed is very well versed, so I won't have to repeat that. But I think that if the MAC would start some sort of a working group, a study group, or perhaps under the strategy for the future, I think that a lot of work has been done already where the the governance documents of the dynamic co several dynamic coalitions will certainly help to express the way to some sort of a IGF recognition of their work. So let me stop there for that topic. There's another thing I'd like to propose for the MAC to consider is that sometimes a topic is very specific and but not easy, but small compared to the huge topics that are usually discussed here. So would it be possible to consider the following, that if such a topic presents itself, that it's not a policy network, it's not a year long BPF, but a pressure cooker on developing a policy recommendation, some sort of a blueprint that at the end of the IGF cycle, the world could immediately use so that experts are brought together and that they agree on a certain example saying, this is the best way forward for this topic and that they dissolve their work at the IGF when they present it. And that would give another opportunity for the IGF to in a very fast way, discuss on urgent topics that do not need years to solve like some of the other bigger topics do. So if that would be an option for the future, I think that would be a tremendous addition for what the IGF is capable of and also showing how they can help with policy that uh, needs solving on a global level. So let, let me stop there and I hope that is something we can consider for the future. Thank you for the opportunity, Carol. I'll discuss with the, um, with the Secretariat, you know, Budgets and um, approvals and things like that have to be considered and um, we'll address and bring to the MAG. Jordan? Thanks, Carol. I think Wood's suggestion is one of um, many ideas floating around about how we evolve and improve the IGF's working methods. I think we should probably think as we do our strategy work about seeing if we want to call for community suggestions and ideas about that. Um, I don't know if that's part of the IGF prep process or a parallel one, but um, I'm sure there are lots of creative and interesting ideas about ways to multiply the impact of the IGF system.
Okay, so I want I would like to thank everybody for being present, um, present and awake <laughs> for those who are at odd hours um, joining us uh, online and um, those who made the journey. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we all participated to the best of our abilities and I'm very pleased to see that we had a lot of, of chat, a lot of um, discussions and a lot of things decided. Um, and I thank you for that. Of course, we will get you will have the um, the notes from the meetings and the and the action items to consider. Um, last but not least, I would really love to to um, thank and give a nice loud hand of applause to our host country. Um, I've been sending pictures back to friends and family, and they think that they're going to send a single jet for me because I will not be able to fit on anybody's plane. And they think that I should come back immediately because I'm being spoiled and that is not how they treat me. So, <laughs> so thank you very much. And with that, I'd hand over to Abdul Rahman. So we are here. So thank you. Yeah. yeah there you so we are here. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a very productive week. Uh, I really appreciate uh, the commitment, the, the open discussion that we have. I would like to thank uh, personally everyone uh, in this room as well as online for their commitment. They're, uh, they're trying to, to let IGF 2024 one of the best IGF uh, ever. And I think uh, this is where we met uh, on, on, the, on our intention. Uh, everyone here is excited. Um, uh, to make IGF is, is one of them, yeah, any, a memorable event that all of us will be proud of it uh, for the rest of our life. So thank you very much for coming. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity also to, th to thank uh, the team who's, who's behind uh, this, all the logistics, uh, my colleague Hassan and, and his team, they did a fantastic job and thank you very much. And last but not least, I would like to give a special thank for the technical team who's in the behind of the room who help us in, in, in managing this and, and taking this event globally. So thank you very much for all support that you did. Thank you. With that, we back to chair and we would like to welcome you again in December, inshallah, and, and we'll have more restaurant to, to go there. So Ooh, <laughs> Okay, thank you, everybody. Um, have safe flights back, those that are here, those who are staying for um, leap next week. Yeah. Please enjoy. Uh, try not to eat as you did with us, okay? Um, but enjoy those that are staying an extra day. Um, enjoy the what um, what is being offered. And again, safe journey back. We'll see you online. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's really an honor to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is fantastic. Thank you very much.